So in this Feed Your Faith video, we want to talk about feeding your faith by reading Christian books. So what are some books that have had a major impact on my life? Of course, we have the Bible. We have God's holy, inerrant, infallible word. It, of course, is number one and tops the list. Uh, but outside the Bible, what are some books that have had a major impact on my life? First one I want to tell you about is No More Excuses by Tony Evans. Uh, this book has had a major impact on my life. As a, as a young man, I felt that... Um, you know, when I was a good person and I had done things uh, God's way or what I perceived to be God's way, that that would uh, somehow earn me some kind of a, a benefit, if you will, from God and make my life a lot easier and, and smoother. And that wasn't happening. So I was, uh, I, was, I was angry and I was upset with the Lord. And so I picked up this book and I started reading this book in the very first chapter of this book, No More Excuses by Tony Evans, it is a story from the Bible, obviously, about Joseph. Uh, the Code of Many Colors, you may have heard of it. And Joseph's life was not easy. And by all accounts, he had done nothing wrong. He was a good kid, a good person. And yet at every stage of his life, it seemed like he drew the short end of the stick. And now at one point, not one point, did he ever shake his fist at God and blame God? He kept going along and trusting the Lord that God had a plan for his life. And ultimately, uh, Scripture tells us and plays out that uh, Joseph did uh, play a major role in the nation of Israel and, and helping to save not only the nation of Israel, but the, the Egyptians as well. So that really had a huge impact on my life. Of, uh, not, no more excuses, Jason. You need to do things God's way and let him take care of the rest. The second book I want to tell you about that had a major impact on my life is The Insanity of God by Nick Ripkin. This book is what I would call an easy read. Uh, I don't, I'm not a good reader. Um, what I mean by that is um, it's hard for me to read. It takes me a long time to read. And it's something that uh, I don't necessarily like to do. So when I say something is an easy read, it means that I could sit down and it reads almost like a story to the point where I just want to keep reading it. Um, it's written uh, in that fashion where at, each, at the end of each chapter, you want to keep reading to see what uh, goes on in, in, in Nick's life. Long story short, um, this book challenges our Christian faith. Uh, especially here in America, uh, because he talks about living the Christian life in the midst of persecution. And he ends up interviewing multiple people all over the world, talking to them about their story, how they lived the Christian life through and in the midst of persecution. And it breaks your heart. It will break your heart. I would almost challenge you to read it and not, not weep. Um, but what it does is it challenges you and it challenges your faith to, in the, especially here in America, that we don't have the same types of persecution here in America. We don't fear for our lives. Coming to church, we don't fear for our lives and witnessing for the Lord. Um, people may not like it, but um, we're not here to point in our, in our culture yet where uh, we have to be in fear of the government coming in and and throwing us in prison for saying the name of Jesus or taking our family away uh, because we uh, may be a pastor of a church. We're not, we're not there yet in our culture, and I pray that that never comes to fruition here in America, but that is not the same in other parts of the world. It's a, it's a reality they live with every single day. And so read it. I would challenge you to read it. It will impact you. It'll have a, a, a it'll have an effect on your Christian faith um, and, and challenge you to truly, truly live the Christian life and not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if you were to ask me what uh, two books 
had the greatest impact on my life, uh, outside of the Bible, of course, uh, my number one answer would be uh, The Insanity of God. Uh, but I will pick two other books uh, that have had a great impact on me. And, uh, you know, I've read a lot of books. Uh, I've read most of the books that are you see behind me. Uh, not every single one of them, but, uh, you know, I've had a lot of uh, time in ministry now, almost 30 years, and I've been given books and purchased books and in seminary had a lot of books. But uh, in different stages of my life, different books had an impact, but I want to go back to, to really the beginning of my ministry as a young uh, pastor and, and uh, as a growing Christian in my 20s, two books that had uh, the greatest impact on me. Uh, the first is this book here, uh, Developing the Leader Within You by John Maxwell. Uh, my father encouraged me to read this book uh, almost 25 years ago, and uh, just had a big impact on me. I was, uh, I felt like I was always a leader, but I was never really a, a, a vocal leader. I was not the, and, and this, this book really helped me develop as a leader. It talked about different qualities of a leader and the influence that we have. Uh, and that those, those things in this book, the timeless principles, uh, John Maxwell is a former pastor. Uh, now he is a, uh, a speaker, speaks all over the world. Uh, and speaks to large corporations, and uh, he's just a brilliant man, and God has used him to develop leadership. And uh, this book really touched me and, and encouraged me and developed me into that leader that I needed to be. Uh, and so I, I would strongly encourage you to, even though it's an older book, it's almost 30 years old, and it's still relevant today, I believe, and I still reread it uh, every couple of years to remind me of some principles that really founded my uh, my ministry, the foundation of my ministry. Uh, the the second book uh, that had a great impact on my life is called "Don't Waste Your Life" uh, by John Piper. Uh, this book is the uh, came about from a sermon that he preached uh, many years ago called "Don't Waste Your Life," and uh, this book really challenges Christians to not waste their life here on earth that we only have one life, and that Jesus Christ bought and paid for that life, and that many people do waste their life. And a famous line from this book is talks about, he says, I'm going to tell you what a tragedy is. He said, I'll show you how to waste your life. Consider the story from Reader's Digest, and he quotes the story. It says, a couple took early retirement from their jobs in, Northeast, in the Northeast five years ago when he was 59 and she was 51. Now they live in Punta Gorda, Florida, where they cruise on their 30-foot trawler. They play softball and collect seashells. He says, now picture them standing before Jesus Christ on the day of judgment. And now all they have to say is, look, Lord, look at all of our seashells. He says, what a tragedy. And the idea here is that as Christians, our life is not about us. Our life is not about collecting as much as we possibly can on this earth. But what are we doing for God's kingdom, because we're either going to build our kingdom or build God's kingdom, God's kingdom, uh, and one has an eternal impact, one is a temporary earthly impact. And this book challenges me and challenges the reader to have a kingdom impact and not waste our life here on earth. It talks about how we could die the most wealthiest, most powerful person on earth, and our life was wasted if we did nothing for God's kingdom. Don't waste your life, by John Piper. And Developing the Leader Within You by John Maxwell. Uh, these books, I pray, can impact your life like they have mine. Outside of the Bible, of course, there's four Christian books that you can read to feed your faith and grow in your relationship with the Lord. Thanks for watching.